back to the channel. Guys, the, the Master Universe news just will not stop. <laughs> I love it. Yes. The Turtles of Grayskull also had a full set of reveals today. And thanks to our good friends over at Geek Dead Life, they were able to showcase some very, very, very high resolution photos. Unlike those fuzzy, fuzzy pictures, which we got in that leak earlier last week. I want to take a deep dive into this and see exactly what was released for the Turtles of Grayskull line and what's coming up for their fall release of 2024. Some of these figures will be going up as early as tomorrow, guys. So stay tuned to the channel because I will have those links in the description below where you can pre-order those wherever they do land. And unfortunately, some of those will be Walmart and Target exclusives. But let's have a look and see exactly what was released on GeekDadLife.com for the Turtles of Grayskull. This is going to be crazy, guys. One crazy day for Master of the Universe, and it continues. Our good friends over at Geek.Life were given the opportunity to showcase some of these amazing high-resolution photos from the Turtles of Grayskull Fall 2024 reveals, and I'm excited about this, guys. And check this out. The TMNT Motu reveals posted by GDL on March 26, 2024. Mattel, Turtles of Grayskull Fall 2024 lineup has been revealed. Mattel sent us high-resolution photos of their Fall 2024 catalog to share with you all. These reveals include long-awaited figures such as Michelangelo, Tila, Stealth Ninja Leonardo, April O'Neil, and more. Check them out below. Pre-orders begin Wednesday, March 27th with a Fall 2024 release. Deluxe Leatherhead and Deluxe Merman are Walmart exclusives. Deluxe Splinter and Deluxe 2 Bob Steady are Target exclusives. Dang! Oh my gosh. Deluxe Splinter Skull? A Target exclusive? Ah, uh, So disappointing. And Deluxe Merman? Walmart exclusive? Uh, even more disappointing. I really do hope that they have links to all of the places to order these figures. I'm pretty sure our good friends over at Toy Habits will be able to handle that. But let's take a look at some of the figures that were revealed today. Starting with figures we've already seen, but with higher resolution photos. Here is April O'Neil as the Sorceress. They just keep calling her April O'Neil. I don't even think there was much of a press release on this, so still a lot of a mystery. But, I mean, look at the sculpt on this. The wonderful wings. Oh my god. This is just incredible for the wings alone. Like, holy crap. That is some awesome sculpting right there. I love the fade from, I guess, like, you know, really white tips all the way. And they're more, actually more like silvery tips all the way to, like, a lighter yellow into a, you know, wonderful orange. It's beautiful. I love the face sculpt. Really does capture April O'Neil's face. The headdress is kind of throwing me off a little bit. I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool. It is Zor. Um, and it looks like Zor is literally like perched on her back and you know kind of resting her head on top of april's head it's just really weird <laughs> it literally is almost as the sorceress has melded with april o'neill uh to i guess the way i'm thinking about it is that she's she's actually using her vessel uh as as a, as a conduit to actually leave the castle grayskull i don't know i'm thinking i'm thinking that's something which is which is probably a usable concept i'm not really 100 percent sure she does have the mantle of zor and is it just me or has she been working out a little bit? Oh my gosh. <laughs> April's got some tone in those arms. Yeah, she's been she's been uh she's been getting ready. Like maybe she's doing some calisthenics or some, you know, ninja training. I don't know. Um I love the pattern on her overall dress. It looks pretty amazing. The overall yellow jumper, it really is kind of plain, which is why the kind of texture that they've added to her sash and her blouse, if you will, looks a lot nicer. Kind of breaks that up, which is really cool. She does have that Eternian style belt. Those wonderful gauntlets, which have a silvery blue type of uh, paint on them. I love that. And, of course, her white boots with silver with silvery blue paint. It really does make an interesting character, bar none. I will have to say that out of all the characters so far, she is a little bit plain. Uh, you know, other than the fact that those gigantic wings just make her stand out so much. But other than that, she is pretty much just April O'Neil. Um, probably with sorceress powers. I don't know. It's kind of hard to, to tell. Now, this one took me a while to figure out. This is a camera hammer. <laughs> a camera freaking hammer. That's crazy, man. And it looks like it can really wallop, deliver a pounding blow. That's crazy. Really cool to see this type of new you know, innovation, this new type of imagination. Love it, guys. April O'Neil. Moving on, we do still have this one image for you know Stealth Ninja uh, Leonardo, which is kind of disappointing. There's really not much here that we haven't already seen. You know, Wondering what those keys are still. That's kind of an interesting idea. Is he a gatekeeper? Has he been taken over or... Uh, you know, hypnotized somehow? Huh. Really interesting ideas coming out of here. 
Uh, I do love the sculpt. It's kind of a, a more of a reuse of what we already have with Leonardo, but he has his traditional two katanas, so he really does look more like a samurai warrior. Very, very cool. Here we have his counterpart, Stealth Ninja He-Man. Now, he's not wearing any of his actual stealth uh, attire, if you will. The only thing different about it is this is a standard He-Man buck. Uh, and you know what? I dare say, if we get this head sculpt, that's as close to the original 80s version of He-Man that we're ever going to get. That's actually a really sought-after head sculpt. That's really He-Man. Uh, you know, out of all the head sculpts I've ever seen uh, released in the Origins line, that really does encapsulate He-Man right there. He has his traditional tr strap set with all the cordite running up and down uh, the straps. And of course the iron cordite cross. He does look pretty buff here. And one thing, the only thing he's really changed here is that he has that um, interesting turtle sash. Which is which is uh, unique in and of itself. And he actually has a torn uh, boot, f uh, f I guess foot. His, his toes are peeking out of his boot. Now, that's a carryover from um, muta the mutated He-Man. I wonder if it's because he never had a chance to change. So he's still wearing his, his boots from before when he was muta mutated. That's fascinating. Um, he does come with this plastic cowl and plastic cape. Uh, actually, more it's more like a cloak. Um, and yeah, it, uh, putting this on top of He-Man would be very, very cool, I believe. He does look interesting to, to, uh, with this whole overall pack out. Uh, he comes with his power sword. I think that's an arm bracelet. A shoulder pauldron. I believe that is uh, the other shoulder pauldron. And a, a single shin pad. Interesting. But so far, he looks pretty damn cool. Uh, and again, that head sculpt, man, that alone uh, is something that I need to have. Because that, if we actually get this version of it, looks about as close to any He-Man that I've ever seen uh, from the original 80s collection. So that's really, really cool. Leatherhead has not really changed. We've already gone over his entire pack out. He's got that very interesting shoulder pauldron, his Outback hat, uh, this, uh, it looks like a, a steel tra a bear, tra a bear trap, or I guess a, a gator trap uh, with, a, with a spring feature. And of course, he's got that crazy new tail. That's impressive. And his new Eternian style-ish garbs. So yeah, wonderful, wonderful figure. Hopefully he's not going to be deluxe. I don't think so. Uh, that tail will, I guess, be part of the, the collection, maybe separated. I don't know if you can like remove it or not. But still, that's amazing. Uh, hopefully it will be added to other figures in line when they come out. This is the one I think a lot of people have been wondering about. Here we have Hordak. Hordak from the Turtles of Grayskull. And man, he looks crazy. Uh, this is interesting. He's not wearing any armor uh, on his chest, his chest armor. He just has this um, symbol on top of his pauldrons which is kind of like, you know, connected. So it's not really, uh, you know, his traditional armor set. Uh, but now we can see Hordak very much in the style of, you know, Master Universe, where he's kind of like, you know, buff and, and really kind of showing it off. His new head sculpt is interesting. I mean, he's got that sneer. The eyes are, are a hard thing to nail. I'm very much into the filmation style of Hordak. So for me, this type of head sculpt, I mean, I'm not... I'm not turned off by it, but, you know, it, it, it's going to take a little while to get used to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it that way. Uh, he definitely has a crazy buffed-out body, I got to tell you. And he's got his traditional arm cannon, but instead of being a blaster, it's more of an ooze shooter? Yeah, an, an ooze shooter. We can see, like, four canisters of ooze. Like, well, we can only see three here. I imagine the fourth one is on the other side. And the ooze blast effect is right here. So, yeah, that's definitely an ooze canister. That's crazy. He has a new belt, which he's sporting, which looks awesome. And, yeah, that new shoulder pauldron set and his collar. It's kind of throwing me off because I always thought his collar was part of his armor set. You guys tell me, what do you think about not having any armor while he still has his headdress? I don't know. That's just, that's just, just a little bit strange to me. He also has silver boots with a traditional uh, horde uh, symbol on them. Very interesting overall color scheme here that's going on. But the real standout here, the real elephant in the room, is those dang wings. Holy crap. Look at those things. Oh my gosh. He's got quite the wingspan here. So I'm guessing one of the main features of Hordak is that he can fly with his bat-like wings. Oh my gosh. He's literally turned into Batman. <laughs> Hordak Batman. I guess taking on his overall Horde Prime appearance. I, I guess that's, that's what that is. Really cool. And we didn't really get any more imagery for uh, two Bob Steady. So interesting that we see him here. It's pretty much everything we saw before. Uh, you know, supporting that new hairstyle. Uh, those wonderful two head sculpts, which are just freaking awesome. I personally would have liked a little bit of a bigger, chunkier uh, torso. But that's just me, I guess. Uh, all those kunai that are across his chest. That shoulder pauldron, which is very signature to Bebop. Uh, you know, the legs, which are 100% 
um, two bad, which I'm really hoping is an indication that we are getting a two bad very, very soon. He's got that crazy, uh, you know, I guess Mad Max inspired sword. Like that thing's just medieval. And of course that flail uh, morning star with an actual chain, which is something that Michelangelo did not get. Here we have Splinter Skull. Now, I think Splinter Skull, even though it's got a double entendre, you know, split the skull, uh, you know, that kind of idea. But I think Splinter Skull is in reference to the fact that he has claimed the mantle of King Grayskull. And we can see that here. He has King Grayskull straps, and he's just buffed the freak out. Like, the power of Grayskull has literally transformed uh, Splinter into one of the masters of the universe. He's absolutely ferocious. Like, look at those legs. Look at those arms. This is one buffed out rat. He comes with this crazy sword, which, if you look carefully, the very top of it kind of resembles a power sword. So I didn't really notice that uh, in the fuzzier pictures, but this actually is a wonderful uh, you know, rendition of a power sword. So I'm thinking that the way the power sword has manifested itself for Splinter is to become a halberd, which is amazing. I think that that is really, really cool. Considering the fact that, of course, Splinter is more of a ninja instead of a, uh, you know, barbarian. And, of course, he does don the mantle of King Grayskull, the cape, if you will. And the fact that we're getting this with Splinter, he looks absolutely amazing. And, as I expected, you can separate the halberd from its staff. And it literally is a, a smaller version of the power sword. Man, with that mantle, Splinter Skull looks even more buffed out. <laughs> it's, it, it's hard to believe. I mean, oh my gosh, even his tail looks strong. Like, seriously, that's the kind of thing that's going on right here with Splinter Skull. He looks absolutely badass, and I can't wait until we get him into the collection. I love the, the wrappings with the bare feet. That's just so Splinter. I love it. Those dreadlock braids are actually coming from the back of his head. So yeah, that's, that's an interesting little detail that I was originally thinking that they were part of his, and you can see the, the longer ponytail, uh, that's on the back of his head as well. Very reminiscent of King Grayskull. That's freaking awesome. And the next figure of the line is one that I was really anticipating after I saw him in many, multiple pieces as well as the mini comic. Merman. Holy crap. Uh, Turtles of Grayskull Merman is looking badass. He has a leg set as well as a full-on tail a la Lady Slither. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Literally, they've taken certain parts and mixed them together. Uh, unlike Lady Slither, though, he has more of a fish tail. So it's kind of like more of a merman, an actual merman, which is really living up to his name, if you will. He has this new sword, which is not corn of the cob at all. It's some sort of, looks almost like a, sh a shark's fin or something, a mutated shark's fin. That's crazy. He has a waist belt with a sash, which is used to actually help affix the bottom portion of the snake tail. Sorry, in this case, the fish tail onto Merman. He's got this crazy new aquatic looking head. He looks like some sort of angler uh, from the deep, deep, deep parts of the ocean. Look at that size of his mouth. Out of all the characters right now, he has the most drastic and most uh, extreme character redesign. This is amazing. I love the new armor set. Still reminiscent of, of Merman, but at the same time, very, very different. He's in this translucent, as we've seen before, uh, plastic, which has come with you know, the um, Ram Man, it's come with Mutated He-Man, uh, it's come with Moss Man, the mutated version. Uh, so interesting that they're continuing that uh, new usage of this translucent type plastic. But they have these highlights of gold uh, type or, or very, very extreme yellow uh, along the, the characters and those really red deep eyes. But there's also this inlay uh, or, or inner color of purple on, on certain aspects and those veins that continue to pop out. I really do like the, the overall color scheme. It really pops and again, he looks just like some sort of monstrous, uh, deep-dwelling freak. <laughs> he does look pretty awesome, though. And standing there as he does, knowing Merman as he's supposed to look like, this is just frightening. Just a frightening, nightmarish version of the character. And actually, I've just noticed he has Clawful's feet and Clawful's legs. Wow. A whole juxtapositioning of characters here. Oh, he does come with a trident, too, which I believe is included with the new cartoon edition. Interesting. Very, very interesting what they're doing with this line. There he is, showing off his beautiful tail. I love the fact that he can stand using this tail. It looks amazing. And it looks like you can attach something onto his back. Um, was that actually noted in the other scene? Not yet. Uh, there's that shark's fin sword. Looking crazy. Uh, let's take a deep dive into Michelangelo now. And we've seen these photos here. He does have an extra wig, which does come off. Uh, we, uh, I saw that earlier. His battle armor does not react. It doesn't actually uh, have any battle damage, which is, again, kind of disappointing. But the overall pack out with him is interesting. The two shoulder pauldrons, the 
waist skirt. And the, again, very much similar to the way Splinter is. He's got leggings, but no, no, uh, no boots. And of course, his removable shell. So much fun. Michelangelo can remove his crazy wig, which is, eh, I, you know, that will appease a lot of other fans, which is fun. Oh, that's there. See, okay, so this must have been a very early picture. This must have been a very early production picture because these links are not separated, which disappointed me. Disappointed me so much. But this new version, we can see here clearly that there are chain links here. All right, that's now I'm satisfied. Now I'm happy, guys. Because what's Michelangelo without an actual pair of nunchaku? That is really cool. Bravo. Bravo, Mattel. Uh, doing it right. Doing it right. Excellent. Yes, very interesting to see that. He does actually have his bandana uh, swinging from the background. So that's really cool to see. Oh, man, I'm so glad he has those chain links because the first version was really just bumming me out. I was like, come on, are you serious? That is so crazy. Uh, you know, I'm really happy to see that he actually has these chain links. His expression is one of the best. This is Michelangelo. Happy-go-lucky. Awesome freaking turtle. Those eyes, so reminiscent of the, of the Archie cartoon, as well as a lot of s scenes from the original comic books and stuff. Uh, sorry, the, the Archie comics. And I love that wig. I just, a lot of people are like, stupid wig. I'm like, no, I love it. I love that wig. Really, uh, you know, just owning the idea that he's taken over He-Man's position. Skeletor. Now I've been I've been going on calling him Shogun Skeletor, but according to Geek Dad Life, Skeletor's actual name is just Skeletor. Um, I don't know if that's going to change. Uh, you know, if we actually see the the full uh, release of the of the character, but I'm going to continue calling him uh, Shogun Skeletor because I I can because I can. This is my show. I can I can do whatever I want. He really looks cool with this new headdress, very similar to the way it sort of is inspired by um, Shredder's headdress, but it's actually more inspired by traditional samurai warriors, especially those who wore oni masks. So it really does fit the character of Skeletor. It also really reminds me of the 2000X Skeletor when he had that upgraded armor set. That was something I noted in the first time I saw this this character in the comic book. He has this sort of like, uh, again, it's a mantle, but it's all colored in black, and it is not uh, soft goods. It's, it's actually plastic. He, he can drape this on top of his armor set, which, again, I'm wondering if this is glow-in-the-dark, because it really does look like it lends itself really well to glow-in-the-dark. It has this really, you know, sickly green, almost neon-like ooze, uh, you know, kind of uh, color, but it's it's highlighted by black, or is, is, is it more like shadowed by black uh, highlights? <laughs> I don't know exactly which way to call it. But he has that traditional samurai sash uh, with all those plate armors there. Really cool to see that. But it also is inlaid with some techno gear. I like that. And of course he has those sh uh, shin pads, which looks freaking amazing. His Havoc staff has been transformed into a pair of scythes, which are attached by a chain link, very much in the style of a ninja type of weapon. But you can see those ram heads uh, can really also do damage as well. He also comes with a canister of ooze. Those are um, gauntlets. Those are forearm gauntlets. Interesting. All right, so I, I called that completely wrong. So yeah, with those with those uh, forearm gauntlets, he really looks ready for battle. Oh my gosh, just crazy. Samurai, again, I'm calling him Samurai Skeletor, looking badass. He really does look impressive. That mantle, the, uh, the cape itself, looks very familiar. I'm thinking it might be lifted from Scareglow. Uh, I could be wrong, but somebody can tell me in the comment section below if you guys know any better. I do love the sculpting on the Shogun style, the samurai style helmet. Shogun Skeletor, man. That's what that's what I'm calling him, man. It just, it just rolls off the tongue. I love the spinal column that's in the back. Just, just so creepy and awesome. Skeletor looks badass. Here we have Tila. Wow. I'm going to really get mixed up between April O'Neil and Tila right now because they're just... <laughs> I don't know. They, 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 they have such similar looking faces, uh, at least to me. And yeah, this is awesome. She has her new turtle armor, which we did see teased in the comic book. And this is incredible. She looks great. I love that wonderful face sculpt. Man, they, they're really killing it with the, with the female faces right now. She's got a wonderful helmet that she can wear. And I think it is removable. She has that... Uh, yeah, that furry mantle, which I guess every single one of the Turtles of Grayskull characters are now donning this mantle. It's weird. Uh, it's kind of like a fleece. She has this new pauldron set armor, which is really cool. And it does look like it's actually removable. That's neat. She has this crazy new waist armor as well. It's like chainmail. I like that. I like that a lot. But it has, it has a, a cloth frontage. Interesting. And of course, she is more traditional with the rest of her armor set. Uh, pretty much, uh, basically, just a, a regular Tila uh, from Origins, you know, suited up, which is awesome. I love it. 
She has additional um, shoulder pauldrons, which is amazing. That gigantic Psy weapon, which I don't know if she borrowed it from Raphael or not, but it looks amazing. And, of course, that wonderful turtle shell. Incredible. Shield. Turtle shell shield. She looks absolutely badass with the shield on or off. I love that crimson hair that she always sports. And, again, that crazy fleece mantle, man. It's 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 great. Look at the size of that Psy compared to her. It's, like, basically, uh, you know, ha- her almost her entire height. That is one crazy Nodonachi right there. That's crazy. Those are actually um, uh, gauntlets. Uh, I thought they were shoulder pro- additional shoulder projects, but they're not. They're actually gauntlets. Cool. Here she is without her shell, and it's interesting to see this. I think that those two pegs are literally for the shell. You can attach them onto Merman. You can attach them onto any of the turtles. And, of course, you can attach them onto characters like Tila here. Uh, very interesting to see her not wearing her shell uh, and using it in battle. I love it. See what I mean? Like, it literally is pretty much right to her shoulder level. It's crazy to see how big this, uh, this over, it's comically sized for her. Comically sized sigh. <laughs> just, just to drive the point home, they're just literally having Tila look straight up at the sigh. But, you know, now we get a quarter side view of the helmet, and I, it looks striking. I love it. It's got this, you know, almost beak-like protrusion. Kind of making me, reminded me of Daffy Duck for some reason. I don't know. And that's an interesting way of looking at it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing up characters all over the place. She really is a formidable foe. Uh, the captain of the guard, Tila, from the Turtles of Grayskull. Here she is without her helmet, and she looks absolutely stunning. Tila, captain of the guard in the Turtles of Grayskull. This is the last character in the set that was announced today. And man, look at his pack out. It's just a plethora of everything. As is pretty traditional with Casey Jones, he comes with freaking everything. Oh my god. We've already seen pretty much his entire pack out uh, in, in that one leaked photo, but let's go through it again. He's got that, I guess it's like a Skeletor-inspired hammer. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is lifted directly off of Triple H from the Masters of the WWE Universe. Somebody can correct me on that, but that's what it looks like to me. Um, yeah, it's Skeletor-inspired, but I guess... It, it was liberated by Casey. Uh, he's got that I, Ram Man inspired mask, which he now uses instead of his hockey mask. He's got a javelin. He's got that hockey stick just decked out with so much armor. I don't know if it was mutated or not, but it looks amazing. Uh, it's a goal, By the way, it's a goalie stick. <laughs> he's got that single katana, which again is shared by uh, Leonardo. He's got Jitsu's. Um, um, I guess, Thanos-style glove. Uh, you know, the power glove. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Infinity Gauntlet, man. Like, seriously. It even looks like it's sculpted to be the Infinity Gauntlet. He's got that one shoulder, that one shin pad, which is taken from Man-at-Arms. That crazy axe, which looks cr- it just insane. And, of course, his golf bag, which has been, you know, updated with Ram Man-like uh, appearances. So, yeah, a lot of great stuff that you can pack into this I'm going to call it a duffel bag now. It's just ridiculous. And then, of course, we do have Casey unmasked. Man, he's always had that pretty boy appearance once he takes his helmet off. Just crazy. He's got that single pauldr- the single shell pauldron, uh, the new strap set, which goes across his chest. Uh, really striking blue. Um, I guess I'm going, to, I'm going to call it like a, a um, sports uh, attire. Uh, he's got that waist belt with new pockets. And underneath that is his furry loincloth with the attorney-style belt. Those gray... Uh, tights and those crazy new amazing looking uh, attorney style boots love it Casey freaking Jones everybody he looks badass and even without even just as himself you know in a lot of ways he looks like he's just ready to rumble man with he only needs one uh, piece of equipment and he's ready to go he looks amazing love Casey and again that pretty boy appearance dang him look at him here with his entire pack out oh my gosh just way too much stuff, but you can all fit it all into his his duffel bag. I'm gonna say I call it you know a duffel bag, and he looks awesome. That jitsu style freaking karate chop hand, ah, oh, love it. The katana, and of course on the ground for whatever reason is his new mask, and then of course we get the one image we saw earlier with Casey. He looks freaking badass, guys. I love the fact that you can actually see his eyes through the helmet. This is freaking amazing, guys. The Turtles of Grayskull have brought it hard and heavy in 2024. This is a great time, an amazing time to be a Master Universe fan. Cowabunga Pizza Power. 
Holy crap, everybody. The Turtle News and the Master Universe News just does not stop. <laughs> I'm so excited, everybody. I am so excited. Guys, let me know in the comment section below. What are your thoughts about the Turtles of Grayscale Line continuing in 2024? I myself am absolutely excited about this crossover. It's been polarizing, to say the least. I think there are some fans who are basically like, this should never have happened. Turtles should never have ever, ever, ever crossed over with Master Universe. But there are folks like me who are just absolutely amazed and incredibly impressed at some of the wonderful designs and imagination that's coming out of this. And the fact that Freddie Williams II is still going to be able to do more comics, that is just making me even more excited. Let me know in the comment section below, guys. Are you into the Turtles of Grayskull, knowing that they're going to continue well into 2024? Or are you not into this line and are pretty much disappointed at everything that's being revealed in this particular packout? And don't forget, guys, Flipboard, over $180,000 in pledges from 1,242 backers. Thank you, guys. Thank you so, so, so much for all the support. You guys are absolutely amazing. This project will go into production after six days, but we are trying to reach our 200,000 stretch goal. And just as a small recap, if we reach the $200,000 stretch goal for only $49 with a standard Flipboard, you get all of this. You get the original Flipboard with money bags, the stopwatch, the staff of FOMO, his swappable scooper, his backpack, his cloak of Tarjay, and of course, Ketcha, and standard with every Flipboard that's purchased and his variants, you will also be getting all of these additional accessories, including the cube of NFT, the beat up head with beat up glasses, the gripping hands to hold on to these amazing backing card figures, regular Flipboard, Stealth Flipboard, Gold Flipboard, and Glow in the Dark minifigures, the talk to the hands, palm hands, which can hold on to each of these minifigures, the piss tank box, the perfect plastic, fantastic turtles, shoebox edition with garage action box, and the Galactic Rones of Mayhem Bash Box. Additional mini toy boxes may be available. Guys, this is incredible. What an incredible set for only $49. But we have to reach the $200,000 stretch goal in order to make that happen. Only six days left, guys. Let's make this a good one. Thank you again for all the support for Flipor. You guys are amazing. Let me know those comments in the comment section below, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, please do leave me a like. It really does help me out. And if you're in the position to help out the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon page. It's Mega J Retro on Patreon. Guys, the patrons and channel members of this channel help me make wonderful episodes every single week, and I couldn't do it without them. They are the best. Thank you so much for your support, everybody. It really means the world to me. I hope you're all doing well, staying safe. And as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. We have the power, everybody. We have the power. Turtle power. Pizza power? Good journey, everybody. Geek proud.